One of the brightest lights after the darkness of 9-11 came from a remote town in eastern Canada, and that light is still shining. CBS News travel editor Peter Greenberg is here with an inspiring story of people at their best, and this is really an inspiring story that just keeps on going. It keeps getting better and better. You remember when U.S. airspace was closed on the morning of 9-11, nearly 7,000 passengers and crew members bound for places like Miami, Dallas, and New York suddenly found themselves landing in the tiny town of Gander in Newfoundland. But instead of feeling trapped, they were about to be embraced. Just minutes after the terror attacks of September 11, 2001, hundreds of passenger jets racing towards the United States were ordered to land. Yeah, that's the first medal. medal day. Hannah and Dennis O'Rourke were on Aer Lingus Flight 105 from Dublin to New York when they were diverted to Gander Airport on the easternmost edge of Canada. Welcome to Gander International. On a typical day, it looks like this. Seven planes in, seven planes out. But all that changed one Tuesday morning 10 years ago. In a span of just 90 minutes, this little airport was transformed into a major international hub. 38 jumbo jets carrying 6,700 passengers and crew found themselves on Gander's doorstep with nowhere to go and nowhere to stay. How many hotel rooms do you have in Gander? 500. <laughs> So, and that's uh, sufficient for most, uh, most of our needs on a day-to-day -day basis. So basically you had a problem with about another 5,700 rooms you needed to find. Yeah, but we knew we'd have no problem with that. We knew our people would uh, come through. And come through, they did. In a matter of hours, the town of 9,000 had mobilized a volunteer army to assist the plain people, as they were now being called, bringing food, medicine, and clothing to makeshift shelters in local schools and legion halls. Striking bus drivers returned to work to provide transportation, and the people of Gander opened their homes to thousands of strangers. Beulah Cooper was one of those who offered help. Well, we went into action, and it was unbelievable how the people opened their hearts and their doors. For the passengers, who had spent most of that first night on board an airplane, it was only when they disembarked that the magnitude of the day's events finally set in. They were all together, in what seemed to be the middle of nowhere. I think we were just happy to be on the ground at that point, given what we had heard. I was more concerned about the people, the victims, and I felt quite lucky. For Hannah and Dennis O'Rourke, the feelings of desperation shared by all Americans hit even closer to home. Their 44-year-old son, Kevin, a New York City fireman, had been one of the first responders at Tower One of the World Trade Center. It was horrible to, to see on TV what was happening. And I looked at that and I didn't want to alarm her, but I knew nobody was coming out of that. For the days the O'Rourke's were in Gander, Beulah helped them cope. Beulah would take us out, you know, with her, take a shower, and sit out and have a glass of wine with her and that. And she kept us going. She kept us going, you know. In the years following their ordeal, the plain people have found ways to thank the people of Gander setting up scholarships for local schools, and even arranging for a piece of the World Trade Center to be brought to Gander as part of the town's memorial. When they left, they left with a new sense of hope, they left with a new sense of uh, pride, and they went away saying that there's still good people left in our world. Two weeks later, the O'Rourke's worst fears were confirmed. Their son Kevin was one of the nearly 3,000 people killed in New York on 9-11. But 10 years after his untimely death, they credit the generosity of Gander for helping them get through one of their darkest moments. We're bonded for the rest of our lives, you know. And God bless the people of Gander. They're fantastic. Unbelievable. And today, the city of Gander will be honored at an awards ceremony in Washington for its role on 9-11. And through the weekend, Gander is actually holding a reunion for all of those passengers who were stranded in that city. And the cool thing about this is that this time, the folks who are returning are not returning because they have to. They're coming back because they want to. And you can see why that incredible connection they all established. Yeah, great, great story. story. Peter, Thank thanks. You, you got it.